In today's tutorial, we will learn step by step how to stylize and transform real videos into pretty much any object you can think of. I'll walk you through the specific settings you need to tweak for the best results and share tips on how to run this process quickly on your machine. Shout out to James for inspiring the video idea. He creates amazing visuals using this technique and he's always pushing the boundaries of AI video animations, so make sure you check him out. To get started, you need to install ConfiUI on your computer. It's very easy and I've made a separate tutorial on that. So if this is your first time using ConfiUI, feel free to pause here and watch that video first. Once you've installed ConfiUI on your computer, go ahead and launch it. This is the default workflow that you get the first time you use ConfiUI, but we're going to need to use something different for our video. You can find this amazing video to video workflow by dumping on Civit AI. You can get started with this and achieve really good results. The only downside is that you first need to cut out the character in your video and turn it into a black and white mask for the workflow to work. That's why I took this workflow and added automated masking to it so you don't have to go through that tedious process. You can find my workflow in the description box, so go ahead and download it first. Next, drag and drop the workflow JSON file into your ConfiUI interface. Most likely, you will get a list of errors because this workflow uses nodes that you don't have on your computer. To fix this, go to Manager. First, click on Update All to make sure you have the latest version, after which you will need to restart ConfiUI. Next, open the Manager again, and this time go to Install Missing Custom Nodes. Here, you will get a list of all the nodes that you need, so go ahead and download them one by one. After that, you will need to restart ConfiUI again. Once you do that, you should no longer see any missing nodes errors. Now I'm gonna walk you through the essential nodes one by one and explain how they work. Let's start with the video upload nodes. Click here to select the video that you want to transform. Ideally, you should choose a decent quality video where the subject is in focus and somewhat separate from the background. Avoid low quality videos or clips where the subject is in front of a busy background so you don't run into issues during the masking stage. I will link a few options for you to try in the description box. Now, because this process involves a lot of trial and error and to speed things up, there is a trick that I like to use to preview a short segment of the animation first. To do that, use the frame load cap setting to specify how many frames of the video you would like to process. So instead of zero, which means you're going to process the entire video, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 50 frames. Another thing you can do to speed up the process is to increase the select every nth setting to 2, which means you're going to process every other frame and cut the process duration down to half. However, I noticed that processing every single frame generally gives you more fluid and consistent results, so to prioritize quality, I'm not going to change the setting. In the remove background node, the detail range is going to directly affect the background removal process. I usually set it between 2 and 8. And I found that using a lower value helps with better edge detection and more precise masking. Next, let's move up here and have a look at the load image node. Here you can select the image of whichever element you want to transfer your video to. For example, I want to transform my video to dancing spaghetti. So I'm going to use this image that I've generated using Midjourney. And here is the prompt for your reference. It helps if you use an image with a clear subject against a solid or blurred background. You can definitely experiment with different elements here. And for those of you who want to use flowers or plants, Downpink has also put together an amazing collection of images that I will link down below. Next, use this node to import the background image. Now keep in mind that this is not going to be the exact image you're going to get in the background, however it's going to be used as a reference to guide the process into producing something very close to it. Now there are a few settings that you can tweak to get as close to it as possible and I'm going to run through those in just a minute. First. Right below the image nodes, we have our LoRa stacker. This node uses a LoRa module to add a bit more detail to the animation. By clicking on it, I can see that it says none, which means that ConfiUI can't find the LoRa file on my computer. This is going to be the case for many other files and modules that you will need for this workflow. And I've linked a list of all the modules and files that you need to download in the description box. So feel free to pause the video, go ahead and make sure you get all the necessary files place them in the correct folders, then come back to ConfiUI and click on refresh. And now if I click here, I can see a list of LoRa files that I can choose from, and I'm gonna select the add detail LoRa. 
Next, let's move up here. If you look at the IP adapter unified loader, you will see that it has a list of presets that you can choose from. Each preset has a different strength and you can use this to control how much of the input image you want to see in your output video. I'm going to stick to high strength here, but feel free to experiment with the other presets. Down below, the first IP adapter advanced node can be used to control the strength of the spaghetti image itself. You can focus on adjusting the weight. A higher value means that you want to see more of the elements in your output. And the same goes for the second IP adapter node, except that this is connected directly to the background image. Moving on to the right side, let's focus on the load animate diff LoRa node. Let's make sure that the motion LoRa model is loaded. Below that, you have the strength value, which can control the amount of motion you're gonna have in your output. Also, make sure the animate diff model is loaded in the workflow. Another essential node that you need to look at is the efficient loader down here. By default, we're selecting a checkpoint called Dream Shaper, which is going to drastically affect the artistic style of your animation. There are many other options to choose from. From, I personally like to use either Dream Shaper or Cyber Realistic models for this type of videos. Right below that, you can load a VAE model. Without this, your animation can look a bit flat and washed out. For the LoRa here, I'm gonna load the same file that Downpink has used in his workflow. It's really important that you pay close attention to the prompt that is written here as it's going to directly affect what your output is gonna look like. I'm using generic keywords here to describe the scene. You can add whatever you think is relevant. You can use the negative prompts to describe whatever you don't want to have in your animation. Here, let's switch the seed from fixed to randomized. Right below that, we have another very important group of nodes. We're using two different control nets here to guide and define the subject shape and outline. The first control net uses the QR code monster model. The strength of this control net is set to 0.5 and the correct value will mainly depend on your video. The second control net node uses the linear model and same thing here you can play around with the strength for my video i found that one works best so i'm gonna stick with that now let's move up here and look at the k sampler node this is gonna process our video to create the animation preview increasing the steps value will generally result in better quality outputs but keep in mind that the higher this is the more resources it's gonna take and pushing it too high will make things very slow and even result in low memory errors keep the cfg below 2 here let's stick with the default 1.5 leave the sampler set to lcm you can definitely experiment with different schedules rules here but I found that SGM uniform works pretty well for me. Finally, set the denoise value to 1. The first video combined node here under the preview group is meant to put all the processed images together and turn them into a video. Make sure you set the frame rate to match your original video and the rest is just standard settings for output destination and video format. The remaining nodes have other purposes. Right now they are grayed out because they are muted to speed up the process and I will show you in just a minute what they're for and when you need to use them. But for now, I wanna see what I can get with these settings. To start generating, simply click on Q prompt and you should instantly see the nodes execute one by one. If you run into any errors, I invite you to join our Discord community. The members are very active, helpful and supportive, so be sure to check it out. The K-Sampler node is gonna take most of the work to process the video and once it's done, you should be able to see a preview of your animation play right here. Now, because I've tried these settings before, I'm quite happy with the results. Keep in mind that you might need to use different settings depending on your video and image inputs. Also, you should consider that the preview you're looking at here is a low quality video that we will upscale later on and it will change slightly during the process. To see what that looks like, change the seed back to fixed, select the first upscaling group of nodes and press on Ctrl M to unmute them. Here you can set the upscaling multiplier. I want the upscaled video to be in 720p, so I'm gonna change this to 2.5. If you're wondering how I found that, I simply divided 720 by 288. You can go even higher if you want, but keep in mind that this means you will use more resources and it will take more time to process. Among all the settings in this K-Sampler node, the most important one to play with is the denoise setting. If you push this higher, the upscaled image is gonna look less like the preview. So play around with this and see what works best for you. I usually set it around 0.5. Let's make sure the frame rate is the same as 
as the original video, then click on Q prompt again and wait for it to process. And as you can see, now we have a sharper and better quality preview based on which you can decide whether you want to move forward with generating the entire video. To do that, go back to the load video node and change the frame load cap back to zero. You can also enable the second upscale nodes. First, make sure that the upscale model is loaded. Here you can set the final resolution of your video. The frame rate is set correctly. Right next to that, there's another group of nodes that is meant to interpolate the final video. This is only needed if you've changed the select every nth setting. Just make sure that you divide the frame rate by that number. So here in this case, it would be around 12 fps set that on every single video combined node except for the interpolation node this one should always match the original video i don't really need it here so i'm gonna go ahead and mute it again now i'm ready to process the entire video so let's go ahead and click on q prompt wait for it to process Obviously, this time it's gonna take a bit longer than the preview, but at least you're more confident about your settings. Also keep in mind that the second upscaling stage is gonna take the longest compared to any other node in your workflow, and because its only purpose is to improve the quality of the video, it doesn't really denoise or change the content. What I like to do is go with a third-party software that is much faster. First, you need to find the video animation file, open ComfyUI, go to output, Open the folder with today's date. Here you will find subfolders organized based on each stage of your process, including previews, the first upscaling stage, and so on. Open the upscale denoise folder, inside which you will find all the video outputs. I personally use Topaz Video AI to upscale this video to 1080p or even 4K. It's usually much faster than Comfy UI, and by the end of the process, you will get sharper and higher quality video outputs. You can also bring the final video into an editing software of your choice and color grade it to your liking. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, let me know what other videos you'd like to see on the channel. Till then, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.